Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this week's Kids Church. As you know, we've been looking at the early church, which was the beginnings of church as we know it. It began after Jesus died, raised back to life, went up to heaven, and then sent the Holy Spirit. We've learned that for some, it was dangerous to be a Christian and tell other people about Jesus and what he did. We saw with the story of Stephen that the Jewish leaders did not like it that they shared what Jesus did and they stoned him to death. Paul was stoned almost to death. Those who had done it thought he was actually dead. We thought about Peter being in and escaping from prison. Also, Paul and Silas being in jail as well. We have also seen healings of people who couldn't walk. And we even saw two different people raised from the dead. Dorcas, who was also called Tabitha, was brought back by Peter. And last week, we thought about how Paul resurrected Eutychus when he fell asleep and fell out of a third floor window. Paul's story is a very interesting one. He started as a Pharisee. These are the Jews who were in charge and made the Jews follow all the rules. Those given by God to Moses and other ones that they'd added. Paul persecuted, that means picked on, those who believed in Jesus. Until Jesus himself challenged Paul and he went blind for three days. Once he believed in Jesus... He went around telling everyone about the hope that we can have because Jesus died for us and rose again. Now, Paul had travelled a lot. We last saw him in a place called Troas on his last night before heading back on his way to Jerusalem when he raised Eutychus from the dead. Let's see what happened to Paul in Jerusalem. <laughs> The Apostle Paul told people the good news about Jesus wherever he went. When he returned to Jerusalem, the believers were glad to see him. But many Jews did not like that Paul taught people they don't have to follow Jewish laws to be saved. So these Jews <laughs> made a plan to stop Paul. Paul was at the temple when a crowd of people dragged him away and tried to kill him. But a Roman official came and stopped them. The official arrested Paul and brought him to the Sanhedrin, a powerful group of Jewish priests and other leaders. Their job was to decide if a person had broken a Jewish law, and if so, to decide how that person should be punished. Paul stood in front of the Sanhedrin and looked the men in the eyes. Friends, he said, I have done what God wants me to do. I do not believe I have done anything wrong. Paul explained, that he had been arrested because he taught that Jesus' resurrection gave hope that we all can be resurrected. The men in the Sanhedrin began arguing. Some of them thought dead people would be resurrected at the end of time, and others thought that would not happen. The Roman soldiers took Paul away to keep him safe. The next night, the Lord stood by Paul and gave him an incredible message. Have courage, he said. You told about me in Jerusalem. I want you to tell about me in Rome too. Now, travel in the early church is not what it is now. You couldn't get a quick flight from one place to another, or a quick train, or a car or taxi, as none of these had been invented yet. So it took a long time to get from place to place. And from Troas to Jerusalem, was a long way. Some of it they did by boat, which wouldn't have been moved by an engine like they are now, but would have been controlled by either wind power or rowing. This meant that they had a lot of stops on the way, as boat and walking would have been exhausting for them. In the places that they stopped, they would find other Christians to stay with. Sometimes they stayed longer than others, but where they were, People showed them hospitality and they prayed and worshipped together. Let's worship and sing together now and praise God. From my head to my shoulders, my knees to my toes, I praise the Lord.
Some of the people Paul stayed with and met on the way to Jerusalem tried to persuade Paul not to go back to Jerusalem as it was so dangerous. A man named Agabus took Paul's belt, tied it around his hands and feet and told Paul that this is what would happen to him in Jerusalem. He would be bound up by the Jewish leaders. But Paul said that he would take whatever came to him as he was ready even to die for Jesus if that is what it took. Paul knew that spreading the message of what Jesus had done and telling people that their sins, the wrong that they had done, could be forgiven and that they should live their lives for Jesus. All of this was more important than his own life. If he lives, he can tell people all about Jesus. If he dies, he gets to spend the rest of eternity, forever and ever, with Jesus. Paul saw that as a bit of a win-win situation. Let us now sing and praise God again. I have a Bible that I read. I know the truth and I believe. I go to church with my friends. I have a joy that never ends. Not because of anything I've done. There's a in Jerusalem did not like Paul. They didn't like the fact that he'd been passing the message of Jesus on. And not just that, he was passing it on to Gentiles who didn't follow their laws. For them, following every law exactly was the only way to get to God, by never ever doing anything wrong. What Paul was saying is that although we all do wrong, Jesus has done the punishment for that. It's all a part of God's rescue plan. The Jewish leaders hated this so much that they tried to kill Paul and he was taken to prison for his own protection. Before he went, he tried to tell them how he had at one point hated the Christians too. 
but they had met with Jesus on his way to persecute them in Damascus. He told them how Jesus had changed his life and that God had chosen him to tell the Gentiles about Jesus. It was when he said this that the Jews started to riot and shouting that Paul needed to die. There are always people around who won't want to hear the news of Jesus. Shall we pray? Dear God, we thank you for the lessons that we can learn from the life of Paul. Thank you that he spent lots of time learning about you and that he realised that spreading the news about you was more important than even life itself. We pray for Christians who are badly treated today just for sharing about you. We pray that you give them the strength to continue to tell people about you throughout their hardships. We thank you that we live in a place where we can talk about Jesus without fear of our lives. We pray that like Paul, we can learn to make you the most important thing in our lives and truly put you first. Thank you, God. Amen. Well, that's all for this week's Kids Church. Next week, we'll find out what happened to Paul. This week, though, remember that spreading the news about what Jesus has done is more important than anything, even life itself. But there will always be people who don't want to hear the good news and want us not to say it. But like he was with Paul, God, through the Holy Spirit, goes with us wherever we go and whoever we tell about him. I'll see you next time. Bye. You guys stomp your feet like that? Now let's clap together. That's it. Keep it going. Let's sing this little light of mine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine All right, keep clapping now Sounds good <laughs> Everywhere I go Everywhere I go I'm gonna let it shine Sounds so good. That's called clapping on the back feet. All right, sing this real quiet with me now. Even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Yes, even when when I'm I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine.